visual journalism major and a lot of people actually think I'm a writing publishing ethicist. I am not as much as I love writing. And my presentation is called Tipping the Scales, Finding Balance in Journalism. And I'm gonna describe how I've developed a passion for fairness and balance as I've gone through media here at Biola. And uh, my portfolio website's at the bottom there if you wanna follow along and see what I'm discussing. But looking at the simple idea of fairness can help us understand fairness and balance in journalism. So I just think of an example of when I came home one day grocery shopping with my mom and I had a Starbucks vanilla bean frappuccino and my younger brother walks up and he says, mom, that's not fair. Why does she get a frappuccino? So clearly my younger brother realized that, oh, that wasn't fair. And our society has this expectation of fairness, whether that's racial, gender, <coughs> religious equality, we all want to be treated fairly. And a lot of journalists actually haven't covered their subjects fairly. So where did my passion for fairness begin? It actually began before I got here at Biola. I loved reading through the Union Tribune and Time Magazine as a high schooler, and I'd, I'd just soak up the news. I'd actually read through the hard news section while my dad read through the sports. And so I realized that the media presented topics with different viewpoints. So one newspaper I read would say one thing and then I'd see another and it was a different perspective and I'm like, wait, aren't they all supposed to be reporting the truth? What's going on here? So my friends and family and church members all picked up on that as well. And they would tell me, oh, the media is too biased. You can't trust anything they say in there. And I also watched um, broadcast news with my dad quite a lot. We'd watch NBC, CNN, ABC, so we'd get the full spectrum. So I would notice little inconsistencies there. But they have really discouraged me from pursuing a journalism career because they told me that Christians can't work in an industry where people are gonna lie to people. So that made me really passionate about restoring truth to this industry and bringing light and I've noticed this lack of balance and fairness, especially in political journalism, and specifically during the 2016 election. So I took a politics and media class last fall with Dr. Longino, and in that class we learned about this liberal media bubble. So that's an idea where all the big media companies have a liberal slant, especially those ones in DC, and that affects a lot of what they're reporting on. And so during this class, we learned about how broadcast companies own quite a bit of the media. So this is an infographic about the six companies that own bigger publications. So these six companies own about 90% of the media. So you'll see in there, there's NBC, Fox, they're all owned by somebody. So that influences a lot of what they report on. But we also had to write blog posts for this class. And I remember writing this one. It was about how Trump must reconcile with women voters. And in this article, I wrote about how women were accusing him of sexual assault. And then I also included the view of people who still supported him. But even though I included both sides of that issue, Dr. Longino made a comment on my submission and he said, this isn't quite balanced. You need to incorporate a little more intellectual fairness. And that really hit me hard because I was like, I thought I was being objective in this case, but apparently I wasn't. And so we had blog presentations where we'd get to talk about our blogging class and all the classmates would respond to what I presented. And a lot of my peers actually had different political beliefs than I did. So uh, when they responded to the things I said, I was really blown away that, wow, I didn't even consider that side of the issue or I didn't see that I was having tunnel vision right there. So that really opened my eyes to my personal biases. And then uh, that liberal media bubble inspired me to write this piece for Odyssey. I'm editor in chief for Biola but uh, it's called Political Campaigns for Advertisement to Attack. 
And this is what this piece looks like. But in this piece, I discuss a Trump ad and a Clinton ad. And I describe how those ads have become more like propaganda than actual political advertisements. And then I compare them with the Barack Obama and McCain ad. And uh, I analyze all those ads in this piece and show, look, here's what Trump and Clinton's ads look like, and here's why they're not true political advertisements. And then I contrast that with the McCain and Obama ads. And I say, look, this is what they did a good job on. This is what true political advertising should look like. So through that, I hope to achieve balance and fairness by presenting views from different parties, but also advertisements from different elections. And so I have the videos clearly labeled there. And throughout that piece, I try to maintain neutral with my analysis as well and refrain from any emotion-related language. And then I took another class this spring called Media Narrative Project. If you follow journalism majors on social media, you've probably seen something about it. But the political media class really helped me be aware of my personal biases. And when I started the Media Narrative Project class, Dr. Longino told me, you're going to be writing a book about, or a chapter in the book about the political issues of the immigration debate. And I knew right away, oh, I'm going to have to really keep my biases in check, especially since this is such a hot topic in America. So when I reported for this chapter, I tried to seek sources from both sides of the issue. So Sean and Maria Shehan gave us a tour through Friendship Park. And I used them for a pro-immigration view. But then I talked with somebody from FAIR USA, who uh, centers on immigration reform. And I had the anti-immigration view as well. So throughout the chapter, I tried to balance both the pro and against immigration views. And so I aimed for objectivity there. And I tried not to insert my own opinion. And that was really hard for me, because there are times where I, I really felt empathy for these immigrants that are coming across our country because a lot of people don't realize the circumstances they go through. But at the same time, I realize if we want to keep our country safe, we can't just let anybody who wants to come here be here. So that was a real personal struggle for me. But when I was revising these chapter drafts, I just went through with a highlighter and I looked at it and I said, is this opinion? Or is this something that can be attributed? So if it was opinion, it went right out. And after reading through it the final time, I believe I made it as objective as I can. And I had people read through it too to just make sure that I was being fair and balanced. So why has fairness in journalism become a lost art? We always talk about how journalism should be objective but clearly, a lot of news organizations aren't achieving that. And I've heard that present throughout my class discussions. So in order for journalists to know what fair and balanced journalism looks like, we have to actually understand what that is. So I have some definitions that describe what fairness and balance is. So this is from the NPR. In all of our stories, especially matters of controversy, we strive to consider the strongest arguments we can find on all sides, seeking to deliver both nuance and clarity. Our goal is not to please those whom we report on or to produce stories that create the appearance of balance, but to seek the truth. And we use this book called The Elements of Journalism in 106. And I still resource that book today because it provides 10 elements of journalism that are a really good foundation for any journalist, whether you're new or you're a seasoned professional. So the fourth element of journalism says independence is a cornerstone of reliability. On one level, it means not becoming seduced by sources, intimidated by power, or compromised by self-interest. On a deeper level, it speaks to an independence of spirit and an open-mindedness and intellectual curiosity that helps the journalist see beyond his or own class or economic status, race, ethnicity, religion, gender, or ego. And from the SBJ Code of Ethics, ethical journalism should be accurate and fair. 
Journals should be honest and courageous in gathering, reporting, and interpreting information. The American Press Institute says the impartial voice employed by many news organizations that familiar, supposedly neutral style of news writing is not a fundamental principle of journalism. So this was like really hard for me to be objective in sports journalism sometimes. So I wrote this piece about the women's swim team and I used the headline, Cougars Crush the Eagles. And the swimmers came up to me after the meet and they said, that's kind of harsh. Like, why did you write that mean stuff about us? And I told them, look, I'm just doing my job as a journalist. I'm not Biola PR. So balance in photography. Photos should tell a story accurately and not paint an overly positive picture. So this left photo is the one that's the title photo of my portfolio website. But I photographed this piece for the Chimes called a Game House Cafe for the Win. And I photographed appealing food, but at the same time, I photographed boring books. And you have to cover both sides. You can't just make the cafe like, oh, this is this beautiful cafe. Mm -hmm. So that goes for any story you cover, whether that's a rally or a cafe. And in newspaper design, the design should emphasize various categories of news, so international, national, local, and stories from different perspectives. So if you have a story about Hillary Clinton, you should have a story about Donald Trump in there somewhere as well, even if that's not on page A1. But I've seen publications that just only have Clinton throughout and then Trump's in the back or vice versa. So you can have balance in design. And I believe the LA Times does this really well on their website. They have an all things Trump, all things Clinton page. They both have articles. They have the same buttons on there. They both have a bio, the social media icons. It looks like the same template. I think they did that really well. But I can stand up here and talk about how we can restore balance and fairness in journalism, but it doesn't mean anything if I don't actually apply it. So I've developed my own methods for restoring uh, balance. I've identified my own biases. So I know because I'm a Christian, if I report on something like LGBT rights, that's going to be a little difficult for me to be neutral. And then some of my strategies for remaining objective, I have a for and against list whenever I write an article. So I'll put certain organizations that hold the one belief under one, and then some on the other side. And then reporting only the truth. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll go through with the highlighter, and I'll take out anything that's opinion. But even if I'm writing an editorial, I'll still incorporate intellectual fairness by having people from my opposing side having articles that back up my point so I'm not just venting my opinion. And that goes with the remembering my duty as a journalist is to inform readers and let them self-govern. It's not for me to just vent my frustrations as a lot of editorial writing has become like. And using quotes properly, there's a lot of people who would take a quote out of context and use it to mean something that it doesn't. So I'll go back and play through my tapes and make sure that I'm paraphrasing the quote correctly, but also making sure that it fits in that context. Interpreting statistics correctly, I'll look at the statistical study that I drew those statistics from, and then I'll make sure, once again, that's going with the context and I'm not just throwing a random statistic in there. And seeking outside critiques, I'll always send my parents my articles before I publish them, and they'll tell me, um, where did you get the source from? Like, does this like argument actually go with your beliefs? Like, did you consider this side of the issue? So, you'd be surprised if you let other people read your work. They can see your flaws, but they can also help you strengthen it. So, uh, as a journalist, I really hope to restore balance and bring light back to this industry. And I just want to burst that liberal, uh, liberal media bubble because I don't want to be that journalist that people say, I can't trust anything you read. So I hope to report the truth in nothing but the truth. So questions?